Sewer William C.O. Tell of a lava. Lava, a lava film that they found on my Rosa Fua and Faftai to my colleagues for giving me the opportunity uh, to contribute to this debate. Um, Ms. Chairman, I sat through the Select Committee stage and heard many Aucklanders complain about the process undertaken by this government. I heard many Aucklanders say that the, the process by which this government has undertaken to establish a super city was undemocratic. I heard Aucklanders say that the government, uh, led by the Minister of Local Government, uh, was determined and fixated on undermining democracy, undermining the, the contribution of Aucklanders to that region. And I want to say, sir, that insofar as uh, our local communities are concerned, they still do not have the confidence that the structure set up by this government is going to achieve the so-called uh, aims that were set out by the bill. I want to say to you that in a Herald Digity Poll survey of Aucklanders, they found nearly 60% were opposed to the level of council services being run by CCOs. Uh, a poll found 54% believe that the government had not handled the super city reforms well, uh, as opposed to a, a small group of th about 32 per cent who believe uh, it is being held well. In, in so far as local boards are concerned, sir, there are numerous people in my neck of the woods that do not believe that they will have any significant input as a result of the way that local boards have been established. I want to say that I heard the member from Pakuranga say that there was significant support for the, uh, the ward of Te Rirangi's name being changed into Howard. I just think, sir, that there's been a pattern now being set by this government of saying that this is the process to follow, and after the people follow that particular process, they go ahead and change things. An example is... We, in the second bill, sir, there was a process for us to undertake and overwhelmingly Aucklanders said, yep, we should have Māori representatives on it. And what happened? Before that process even completed, uh, we had this government change of mind because the Minister of Local Government decided he wasn't happy about that. The same thing now happens with Te Irirangi Ward. A process was established for the Local Government Commission the name was uh, consulted of Te Irirangi. Um, the local government commission then decide, yep, we will maintain the name of Te Irirangi. And what now happens is a couple of ministers who uh, didn't like that have decided to lobby the Minister of Local Government and now will be introducing a, a supplementary order paper that will change the name of Te Irirangi Board into uh, Howard Ward. You would think, Mr. Chairman, that having undergone a process set out by this government, that you would give the benefit of the doubt to those who were consulted by the Local Government Commission, that you would allow for the new local board representatives that will be elected come October the 9th to decide for themselves whether to hold on to the name of Te Rirangi or to change it to Howick or whatever other name. I want to say, having met with significant members of the Howick, Pakuranga, Botany community, having spoken to them, and they are significant members also of the National Party, there still remains many who are not happy with the way that this government just seems to ram things through uh, that they believe is right when clearly uh, it undermines their own processes that they've set up. There, this, I want to read out something that um, this person, a long member of the community that I'm making reference to, uh, chair of the Botany Community Board, who says that she is standing up for the silent majority of over 97% who are perfectly okay with the name Te Irirangi. But 
just over 3,000 people, or as she says, 2.75% want the name changed. Uh, she says Te Irirangi is a ward over 17 kilometers long, which incorporates Howick, Pakuranga, and Botany of over 128,000 people. And she says, can you honestly say that people living down the southern end of Botany want to be called Howick? Flatbush is our new town, just starting to become identified in their own right. And some people from Howick and Pakuranga have never been happy to have Botany included. And they absolutely hate the idea of Flatbush being included. But, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sir, you've only had one call. I'll give you another one. So. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And she is <laughs> We are in Botany. Love having Flatbush as part of our new growth area. We are proud to have Barry Curtis Park in Botany. And we, they want to be identified as separate from how it and the name Tedirangi is the best solution. There, I suspect, sir, according to her and other significant members of the National Party, uh, they say that there's been a lot of misrepresentation about this. Um, many of them complain that they can't pronounce the name Tedirangi. Many of them f felt that how it was going to be changed into the name of Tedirangi. How it Botany Pakuranga, those names still remain the same. This is the name of the ward, and uh, it will continue and should continue to remain. And Diane Cleverly, the chair of the Botany Community Board, she doesn't mind my mentioning her name. She's a wonderful person out in the Botany Community. She said, Te Irirangi is the most suitable name for this huge area, which is larger than Hamilton in any area in population. And she's pleading, sir, with the Minister of Local Government, this government, please let us keep Te Irirangi. And I'm conveying that to this house so that this house knows the depth of feeling that other people who have remained silently, who have maintained their dignity and have not been out there trying to manipulate the whole process through the use of a local newspaper and other people, but she's remaining, maintaining her dignity, simply pleading with this house to allow the process to, uh, to conclude allow the new board to come on board, uh, allow them to, to determine whether Te Irirangi should remain for the ward or another new name. And so, but as I said, Mr. Speaker, that is not just one person. There are many people. And I have to say they are people who are members of the National Party who do not like what this government has done, who do not like the hasty manner and the running of roughshod over democracy around the city, who do not like the bully tactics, because that's what they've called it, the bully tactics of this government. They believe that what this government is doing is really a hostile takeover. Nothing has changed significantly from what the three bills are intended to do. A hostile takeover by the corporate friends of this government. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want to lay that for your consideration, for the consideration of the minister next to you, uh, because this is important coming from the people of Auckland. They matter, and at the end of the day, it should be about the people of Auckland. And I don't believe, Mr. Spe Mr. Chairman, that there's been enough consideration given by this government to the impact. And I suspect that now this government having increase the cost of living for the, mark, the numerous people, working class communities throughout this country. We're now going to burden the Aucklanders more because of the additional cost of this super city. And who knows what other unknown costs have yet to reveal themselves. But I have a suspicion, as well as the people of Aucklanders, that we are going to pay to our necks as a result of the termination of this government to run roughshod over democracy, to take control of significant income generating assets that belong to the people of Auckland. Yeah, five, ten,